who do you feel deserves more credit for that comeback? Would it, would it be the players or would it be the coaching staff or is it just like an even distribution? That's a good question. I'd say it's a fairly even distribution. I mean, honestly, I'd say you can scheme as much as you want, but it's a, you know, you need to have good players out there. You need your players to execute on those assignments that your coaches have. So I think that the defense deserves a lot of credit. I think the defensive line played a lot better than, you know, I was expecting. I'm sure many people were expecting the secondary looked really good. Jalen Johnson was incredible. Tyreek Stevenson had the pick six and, you know, it had another PBU on top of that. So I'd say I'd lean the players, but I'd also give credit to the defensive scheme. I think that, especially when you go back with how things started with Eberflus with uh, Alan Williams as defensive coordinator, you know, the defense was pretty passive and, you know, the, the zone coverage was soft and that's something that we're not seeing as much of. I think part of that comes down to play calling part of that comes down to, you know, smarter and more aggressive cornerbacks. I, I definitely give credit to the coaching, but I think, you know, the players, uh, you know, they're the ones that went out and executed. So I got to give the hats off to them as well. I feel like you saw a lot of that shell coverage in the first half and they kind yeah. of went away from it in the second half. That shell coverage was really what like Tony Pollard was just feasting on those yeah. linebackers backpedaling towards that first half. And then towards the second half, they were just like, you know what? Screw it, man. Like let's these, let's let these corners do what they do and yeah. play these like man to man matchups. They're, these aren't elite level corners. And it kind of gives me confidence towards the Texans game. And if you got to give Eberflus credit towards one thing and, it's it's these adjustments he's been kind of making in his career. It's not they're not as quick as I'd like them to be. They're not Bill Belichick esque where they're game to game. Even when you talk about the Justin Fields adjustment, I'd give more credit to that to Luke, Matt Eberflus than Luke Getze when we're talking about like when he did that Washington game in his in, uh, Fields second year, right when they had the mini buy and that changed the season and the, they started running a lot more RPOs. I think Eberflus is a lot more flexible than than maybe some of his under staff is and. Yeah, I think matchups against Texas uh, against Houston. I think you you got to play some man to man, and like you said, that defensive line was like a super pleasant surprise. I think Demarcus Walker had a hell of a game. I think uh, Darrell Taylor, Taylor uh, obviously had an amazing game, and then the defensive interior was not nearly as bad as we chalked it up to be. I I almost look at it as we don't need Trey Hendrickson, even though I think the Bengals are going to suck. Kind of. Thing. You know, I, I, I found it interesting when you hear Matt Eberflus talk about halftime when he went into the locker room. And he said the players were out there uh, talking between themselves, saying, hey, we got this game. We're not going to lose this game, this and that. I think that shows the maturity of the soccer room growing and growing a lot. I know last year when we were, you know, set up to potentially draft Jalen Carter, one of the things Ryan Poles mentioned is he wasn't sure if the locker room is – in the right place to have a guy with potential character issues. And so I think just one year later, I feel a lot different about the leadership on this team. I mean, we saw them name eight guys captain and things like that. So for me, you know, I think you have to give the coaches credit because, well, they didn't repeat the same mistakes last that they did last year. They didn't go. Oh, and one potentially Oh, and two Oh, and four, you know, we started off one and all and that that's important, but the players deserve all the praise in my opinion. I'm sick of seeing miracles for other teams and whether they're scheme based or something that can be replicated, sometimes just winning is something that like boosts players confidence. It's a weird sport with a lot of like momentum and, and, and feeling and stuff like that. Like I feel much better going into the Texans game than I think I should. The The team doesn't feel like a bunch of losers. I think if they start 0-1 and, and they have no sense of a comeback and that game ends 35-10, to 10, I'm, I'm absolutely 100% locking in a Texans victory. I think there's something to that. Whereas now I, I do feel a bit of a chance. I think six and a half on the money line is kind of like a weird number. I, I don't think that it's an impossible game to win. Whereas at halftime, I was like, yeah, we're done. You have a guy in Caleb Williams who's played Superman his whole life. Like his college team wasn't going to bail him out of that situation. Right. So for him to come into his first NFL game and struggle and still come away with the victory, I think might help him calm down a little bit and kind of realize like, hey, I have a team to lean on. He just hasn't experienced that in his uh, college career very much at all. I think that's uh, definitely fair, honestly. I mean, you go back and watch USC games, uh, the defense didn't really do all that much to keep them in games. It was usually, all right, Caleb, our defense just scored a touchdown. Keep us in the game. 
And that's something that would happen over and over and over again. You put all that weight on Caleb and he was able to, you know, he was able to succeed. It's a different game in the NFL. You know, the hope is eventually he can be that guy where it doesn't matter what's around him. He's going to be able to elevate what's around him. But the fact is he's a rookie right now. You shouldn't expect that. So I agree. I think that whether it was, you know, old habits of I need to be Superman, whether it was, you know, jitters about, uh, you know, this being his first game, you know, whether it was chemistry with the receivers still getting used to, whatever the case may be, I think that a lot of those issues are fixable. I think the arm talent still showed up. The athleticism still showed up. And he was, I think, a good decision maker. I think that's something that's not being talked about enough is he didn't make too many uh, dumb decisions with the football. I mean, every once in a while, you know, he had that scramble where he'd, you know, go back like 15 yards for no reason. But when he was throwing the ball, he was pretty smart with it. Like he didn't make any bad throws that were into double coverage or anything like that. And he just, you know, he just simply missed a couple guys. So I think that the accuracy is something that's going to come in time because simply you watched USC. He's, he was a very accurate passer there. I, you know, I have no reason to think that all, all of a sudden he doesn't know how to throw a football. I just think it's, you know, a different game, uh, different situations. And yeah, it definitely for him, I feel like it'd be a uh, very, very relieving to see like, Hey, my defense can keep me in this game. My special teams can make a play every once in a while. My team is going to be able to be good enough to where I don't have to do everything by myself. If, if I'm Caleb, I'm breathing a sigh of relief and just being like, okay, you know, now I can, you know, now I can play my game. Yeah. I personally have like more positives to gain from Caleb Williams performance than I think a lot of people maybe want to just nitpick and, say he's bad. I don't think there's been a general consensus that his performance is bad. I would like to think, but two of the things that stood out to me was uh, pop time. PFF had him graded as the quickest release in terms of snap to, to throw. So the decision making is there. It was 2.04 seconds versus Justin Fields average of like 2.98. It's a whole full second faster. So whether or not the, the scheme is right or wherever, whoever's open, he's making the decision quickly. And then the other part is me and Paulie have said forever, this is my concern with uh, hiring uh, Indianapolis Colts uh, coaching staff and the players. Uh, Football is not a game of nice guys. Sometimes you need some, a couple of assholes on your team that are just competitive as hell. And Jeffrey Simmons talking shit at Caleb Williams towards the end of the game. And Caleb Williams only response is scoreboard, right? Like that to me is just one of those things, as you guys said, like Caleb Williams is used to, having to drag the corpse of the USC defense across the finish line and to be so confident in week one where he's underperforming and doing really poorly and somebody's talking shit and it's like an all pro Jeffrey Simmons talking shit that you're underperforming, you're doing bad. And he's just like, oh yeah, we're winning. I don't give a fuck. Like that's awesome to me. I want an, I want like a confident asshole on my team. That's going to like drag this team across the finish line. I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, especially like Ryan Pohl said, you know, you want to be able to set that culture in place. And I'd rather draft an asshole or sign an asshole and then bring him into the fold, you know, after the fact, after you've established this winning culture and this mentality. But to have someone every once in a while who's going to push some buttons, you know, I think that's, it's a lot of fun to have. So uh, me personally, I'm all here for it. Yeah, as long as there's a legal problem.